Yo, Elliot, I am an asshole. <laughs> I'm aware of it, but I fuck up every time, and my relationship with my wife is becoming toxic because of it. For example, last night, I had a great day, and I just got done training, and I saw my phone on my phone that my wife was out at dinner, and she asked me if I wanted to, uh, if she could bring me back something, but I didn't text, text her back for almost an hour. Uh, when I did text her, she didn't respond and brought me something home to eat anyway, but I didn't want it. I told myself not to be an asshole, but I could not help it, and I made a bullshit remark which ruined our night. I keep fucking up even though I know what I'm about to do is wrong and is going to cause more damage. Why can't I control being an asshole? Do you have any tips on not being an asshole? I feel like I'm an asshole to people I'm closest with, like my siblings, and I feel like I'm starting to treat my wife the same way. You know, one of the things that came to my mind when you said that was an experience I had a couple years ago where I had come home from a, a men's retreat, right? It, it was great. It was an amazing men's retreat. Um, and when I got the, when I got back home, my wife, she had prior engagements, so I was away for a few days. I was home. Uh, I came back home, my wife wasn't there, and I was, on, I was home alone with my daughters. And one of my daughters says something to me, and I didn't like the way she, she, she answered me, right? Like, it was something that she was, she was being disrespectful in some way, right? And I had this gut reaction to just, like, be an asshole, right? Like, this came up to me like, you know what? I ain't gonna let you get away with that, right? And I, was, I, I felt it coming up like it's choking me, like I, it wants to come out of my mouth, and I bite down. I'm like, like I, and I remember having this experience before too. I remember being in high school once, and I was sitting in a class, and a kid, a little fucking shit, he was just like a little twerp, but he would like, he would, he would like uh, irritate people. He would say, and he said something to me one day. We're sitting in class. And he's right there, and I can literally feel like the the monster, the same monster, rise up in my body, and like my fist was clenched, and I was literally gonna grab him by the hat back of his head and just pound him in his face, right? And I, and I, I almost, I kind of made that gesture. I was like, because I was getting ready to do it. I was like, wow, this, this beast is just rising up in me. Same thing like when my, you know, my daughter says something to me that uh, irritated Like I felt like this animal come up. And it's, it, this beast feels like an uncontrollable beast. Like it almost takes over me. And I have no control over it. I've seen this beast come out before. But the reason why I'm bringing up these stories is because there have been circumstances where I feel that beast come up and I tame that motherfucker down. Get down there. Almost like, you know, you ever trying to do semen retention and you're having sex and you feel like you're about to bust your nut. You got to like hold it in. <laughs> I've been doing semen retention, right? You feel like that animal's just about, he about to come out. And then at the last minute, you got to like bite down. <clears throat> you ain't coming out. You ain't coming out. You ain't coming out, right? You got to fight against yourself, right? Fight against yourself. That beast ain't coming out. You got to get stronger than the beast that's in you is what I'm trying to say, right? Because had that situation with my daughter unfolded and I, ah, I could have made much worse situation and, I've, and I have done worse. Or when I was in high school, if I saw that, that kid and I started pounding him in his face in the middle of class, that could have been a problem. Now, it, I'm not saying that I wouldn't be justified, right? Just like you, like, right? Maybe, maybe you want to justify your behavior towards your wife. The point that I'm making here is that within every man, there's a dragon. With every man, there's a beast. Some of us got a bigger beast than others, but that beast must be tamed. Because right now, the beast is running your fucking life. Because if you tell yourself, I'm not going to do this, and you do it, that means the beast got you. Another way to call the beast is the demons. Your inner demon is right up your ass. He got you where he wants you. He's manipulating you like this. That's how demons work. They manipulate you through your thoughts and feelings, right? You just can't help it, right? That demon got you by the marionette strings. <laughs> He's playing with you. He's like, look at this idiot. Oh, here come a circumstance where I could just play with him. And he plays with you. You're out of control. Out of control. That's the problem. It's not what you did. It's not what you said. Maybe you're an asshole, but keep the asshole inside. 
Keep the asshole down a little bit. Bite your tongue. Walk away. Take a breath. It's better off. And I think you know it's better off. So you really are fighting. Yes, I know. You assert. It's out of control. Dude, self-control is the paramount of masculine virtue. We must control ourselves. The reason why the world suffers today is because men can't control themselves. Oftentimes, it sounds like Elliot is angry at women, right? This is what these chicks on Facebook like to say. No, it's not so much women. It's the fact that weak men allow women to behave a certain way. Why? No self-control. Fornicating. I'm talking about sex now, but it's the same thing. If you can't control your emotion, you can't control your lust. And men cannot control themselves. We have lost self-control. We, we live in a world that tells us YOLO and do what you feel, what you're feeling is right, get it off your chest, right? All this, my truth, subjective reality, there's no objective reality. All these things come from the same Satan, the same demon that's causing you to spew out garbage that's going to ruin your relationship is the same thing that's got LGBT parades out there with men twerking on little girls. It's all about laissez-faire. Do what I want. It feels good. Right? And, you know, that's funny because I'm reading some of your comments here. Those seem like two ends of a, of a spectrum, right? Like, you know, one is a guy being, dare I say, toxic or overly masculine, but really being really effeminate actually but being emotional in an angry way and another one who's being a fucking pedophile they're both playing the same game because neither of them control have self-control neither of them have self-control so what you what i would invite you to do what i would suggest you do right this is my advice objectify that demon that is ruling your life just like jesus says get behind me satan when Peter was acting up, he recognized the spirit behind the activity. You got to call him out. You got to call out that beast. You got to call out that demon. You got to call out that dragon and say, you're not going to control me. You can't get the best of me. You are not going to win over me because there's nothing that demon would love more than to watch you destroy your life with your tongue, with your tongue, with the words you say, right? I know, because I'm a man full of words. And the demon loved to get a hold of my tongue, right? I'm over here talking about self-control, and I left like I let like three F-bombs drop out already, right? Right? Practice what you preach, E. Yep. Self-control, self-control. Awareness, right? That's another one, right? Awareness, watching oneself, being vigilant, right? I love that word vigilant because it means I ain't falling asleep. You know what? Like when they do a candlelight vigil? Right, right. They do it for all kind of dumb stuff like George Floyd these days. Candlelight vigil for for a damn criminal Satan worshiper <laughs> or crack addict. Uh, but they do them, and the, with the word vigil, literally means stay up, stay up, stay up, be vigilant, don't fall asleep, don't fall asleep on yourself, don't fall asleep on that that demon, don't fall asleep on that dragon. Be aware, be vigilant, and be very strong in striking him down. Don't let him ruin your life. I know I don't have to convince you that you were wrong in this situation. And I'm even giving you a, I'm even giving you a pass by saying it's not you, it's the demon within you. Say, Jesse Lee Peterson would say Satan's your daddy. <laughs> you acting that way because Satan is your daddy, right? So I'm kind of giving you a pass in a way. But your wife sounds like a good woman, <laughs> right? If she out having dinner, right, with her friends or her family, whatever it is, right, she out having dinner, she take the time to think of your, of her husband, think about you, right, just consider, there's not many, dare I say most women today would probably not do the same thing, right, just from the experiences you guys share with me, she's out having dinner, she's thinking about you, and she call you, not only that, but you didn't answer the phone, which is fine, but she still went ahead anyway and bought you something to eat. But you were like a finicky cat. 
you're like, you're like a little girl. You're like a sissy. When you say, I don't want that. That's like something kids say. I don't want that. I was reading about one of the desert fathers. I was talking about this earlier, right? The apostolic fathers of the church, like these old school monks from like the first century. And I, remember, and, and I always remember this in terms of like food to eat when I don't want to eat. There was this one story, there was one story of, they were telling about this, this one monk, this one father, I forget his name, maybe Ambrose or something. I don't remember his name. And he will eat only once a day, but he would only eat what people give him. And so they would make a show out of it sometimes by giving him like really bad stuff, like gross stuff, right? Stuff that like is edible, but is nasty, right? And this monk was so pious that he made, I guess, an unconscious effort at this point because he's like so saintly that he would eat whatever's in front of him, whatever somebody puts in front of him and be grateful for the fact that he had food for that meal. Think about how far we come. Think about how we come, far we come and what pussies we are compared to men like that. They would fast all day and only eat. And he would eat, not only would he only eat, but he, he would eat. Like he wouldn't de deny it. In other words, if you put something in front of him, he's going to eat it. That was his, that, and he even, he even like, from what I understand, if it was something bad, like it was just it was horrible, if they gave him like leather to eat, wet leather or some shit, he would eat it and he would offer that bad experience up as penance. He would say, I am a sinner. Lord, forgive me. Lord, have mercy on me. I will eat this as punishment for my sins. This is the way these men thought. Were they superstitious? Were they crazy? Right? Were they zealous? I don't know. But you know what? I would rather have those guys have my back than most of us sissies who I don't want to eat that. That's not my favorite ice cream. Oh, there's my, my crust is around my bread. Oh, I don't like pickles on it. What a bunch of fucking fags. Sorry, guys. So anyway, I just, I want to rub salt in the wound a little bit to let you kind of recognize that I recognize that you got a demon on your side that needs to be slapped, kicked down, shut up, because he's destroying your life for silly things. And you have, it looks like you have a good life. Don't let this demon destroy your, your life, bro. Dog. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.